In this lesson, we will be covering summarizing and paraphrasing. All of the examples used as original text in this PowerPoint have been taken from the article cited here. So first of all, what is summarizing? Well, summarizing involves taking just the main points or conclusions of a source. The source could be anything like a book, article, video, web page, anything like that, and writing those main points or conclusions in a few sentences. This is a very important skill for academic writing. Many classes, including the one that we're preparing for, child development classes, require students to write papers summarizing research articles. So how? How to summarize? First, you need to identify the main idea or ideas in an article or text. You need to identify the key vocabulary words that are necessary and needed to describe the main idea. And number three, very importantly, you must paraphrase the important ideas. This means don't just copy the exact phrases from the original text. This is copying, and copying is plagiarism. You do not want to get caught with plagiarism. It has some really bad consequences. So in order to avoid plagiarism, it's important to know how to summarize and paraphrase. So what is paraphrasing? Paraphrasing involves stating an idea or a point in different words from the original text. So here are some tips for paraphrasing well. First, use different words. Teachers often talk about your own words. That's what they mean, different words from the original. Could be synonyms, words that mean the same thing. Number two, use a different sentence structure. So you cannot keep all of the ideas in the same order connected by the same connecting words. You need to be using a different sentence structure. Three, you can always rearrange the words in the sentence. So time clauses and other um, clauses, you can move around within the sentence and change them and the relationship to the other ideas in the sentence. Um, just to change things and make it into your own words. Now, some words and phrases are okay to keep in a paraphrase. These are things like names, dates, and exact quotes. So it is okay in some situations to copy completely the words and phrases that an author used, but in this case, you, it's not a paraphrase, it is an exact quote, and there are some rules about making exact quotes. You need to cite your source and make sure that anybody who's reading your paper knows this is not your idea, it's the idea from someone else. So the first strategy of using different words or synonyms involves just changing a few vocabulary words into different words that have a same or similar meaning. So here's the original text. And then below, using different words, synonyms. So you can see I changed proponents into supporters repeatedly into many times, and positive into beneficial. You can always also use a different sentence structure. So you can see that the underlined part of this sentence, I put in the beginning of the sentence in my paraphrase. That's one strategy. Another strategy is to rearrange the words in a sentence. You can especially do this with 
um, time clauses and other sorts of clauses that are you're able to move around in the sentence without changing the meaning a lot. So something like since the 1980s, we can start the sentence with that or we could use it to, to end the sentence as well. Another very important thing you can do is to use different connecting words. So these teaching procedures are also effective. So the word also is a connecting word here. In my paraphrase, I have changed also to in addition. Another way you can change the words in the sentence is to use opposite words plus not. If you're not sure about a good synonym, but the word has a very good opposite word that you know, you could just use the opposite word plus not. So in this case, I changed provide support to do not disprove for a very similar meaning. Now, some words and phrases are okay to keep, such as names, dates, and exact quotes. So anytime you see an exact number, you can keep that. Any names of authors or important people, places, things, you can keep those. And also statistics. Now, the most important part of paraphrasing is to know you need to use multiple strategies. It is not enough to use only one or two of these strategies when you paraphrase. You must use multiple strategies. Now I'm talking three or more to develop a paraphrase that is substantially different from the original text. So I think the best way to learn is to provide some examples of both bad paraphrases and good paraphrases. So let's start with bad paraphrase number one. I have included the original text and then I have given you my bad paraphrase. Do you notice in the bad paraphrase there's a lot of yellow highlighted portions? This means those are exactly the same as the original text. That is plagiarism. That is not good. If you turned in this in your paper, the teacher would definitely know you have plagiarized from the original source. Not a good idea. And that is because the only things I have changed are a few different words. I only used one strategy. The only strategy used was using synonyms, no words were rearranged, and the same sentence structure was used. That's not really good enough. Here's another example of a bad paraphrase. Number two. Again, here is the original text, and here is another bad paraphrase. Do you see a lot of yellow here? Once again, the yellow part, the highlighted part, has been taken completely copied from the original text. I only changed very few things in this sentence. I did use different strategies, but I didn't use enough different strategies. So in this one, we use synonyms, so that's a good strategy. We repeated the same idea with different words, another good strategy, but the same sentence structure was used and not enough is different from the original. So once again, why are these bad paraphrases? It is not enough to just change some words into synonyms and reword one part of the sentence. You must use multiple strategies to make the paraphrase substantially different from the original text while keeping the meaning. Let's try again. Here is an example, finally, of a good paraphrase. So here is the original text up here and a good paraphrase down here. Do you notice there's not as much yellow in the good paraphrase? 
Not as much is the same from the original text to the good paraphrase. Now there are some things that are the same. I kept these words, book, young children, and early language development. This is okay because these are the standard words and vocabulary that are used in early childhood development. So I don't need to find a synonym for absolutely every single word. If the word is the best word to use or the phrase is the best phrase to use, it's okay to keep it. But you just have to be careful to change enough of the sentence so it's not exactly the same. So why is this paraphrase better? Well, multiple strategies were used. The better paraphrase used different words, as teachers like to tell you, your own words. It used a different sentence structure and it rearranged the words in the sentence. I hope this gave you a good idea of the importance of paraphrasing and some good strategies on how to do it. The next step is for you to judge for yourself. What are some good paraphrases and bad paraphrases? The better you get at recognizing good and bad paraphrasing, the better off you will be at avoiding plagiarism in your own writing in the future. Good luck.